So continuing Godzilla Sundays, we are going to be talking about a creature that was never made, an unmade kaiju similar to last week's. This is, of course, Baggin. This is an ancient super kaiju, which was initially created by Toho and only ever appeared in the 1993 Godzilla game Super Godzilla. Now this would have been perhaps one of Godzilla's greatest threats, the most fearsome kaiju that Godzilla would have ever faced. And it's quite coincidental, and it is only a coincidence, but Bagan is the Indonesian name for blueprint or draft, which as I say is coincidental because this kaiju never actually made it past a draft phase until a game. Now the history of this creature, it was initially drafted for the return of Godzilla and it would be a shapeshifter styled kaiju. Initially it would be an ape-like beast and then upon being wounded it would turn into a half sea monster like creature with a dragon like beast on top so a two-toned kaiju. Each time it changed it would heal itself this would be a process a metamorphosis and after it cannot defeat Godzilla in any of its forms it would combine and create a towering beast. However again it would not be able to defeat him, but it would also not be able to change shape anymore, thus not healing itself, and Godzilla would then destroy it. So that is the return of Godzilla. However, there would then be another version, which would be in Mothra versus Bagan. And in this particular one, Bagan has more of a history. He was, in fact, an ancient dragon that once protected the country of China around 2000 years ago. So this would then bring it more into the mythos of Godzilla as opposed to just a appearing kaiju like some of the other monsters that have come and gone during the franchise. This had a very rooted historical origin as opposed to a fleeting visit. And it's interesting that it was actually a protector of China. Obviously, normally they are protectors of Japan and the surrounding areas. Bagan, for whatever reason, started to threaten the forests that he actually called home. And then the Chinese retaliated and tried to defeat him. He would be frozen in the Himalayans. And then, of course, global warming would take effect. So again, a feature that we see quite heavily in the Godzilla franchise of global effects or war coming into play again. Very much a Godzilla trait. So due to global warming, he would break free, no longer encased in ice, and he would see the damage that humans have done to the lands that he used to protect, and he would begin attacking them once more. Of course, trying to wipe them off the face of the planet entirely. So during this, instantaneously, the ancient goddess of peace, Mothra, would then intervene. The fight between the two monsters takes them to Singapore, where the goddess is unable to stop him. Meanwhile, of course, Mothra has an egg in Borneo, for whatever reason. That then hatches, and the larvae arrives to help its parent. The two Mothras then fight the creature in downtown Bangkok, and despite her attempt to halt the living god's wave of destruction, the adult Mothra is then killed by Bagan, who moves on. The lava cocoons itself on a remote island and becomes, of course, a fully formed Mothra, much like the mythos has shown us in the past. The newly transformed Mothra arrives in Dhaka, Bangladesh, where she would then battle and actually manage to defeat Bagan, where her progenitor was unable to. Unfortunately, Bagan would be scrapped due to Godzilla vs. Biolante not performing very well in the box office. So from this, they didn't want to make such a risky brand new monster and not have Godzilla as the focus. So this would then scrap that script entirely, which is a massive shame. The abilities of Bagan are shape-shifting, of course, in Return of Godzilla. However, in the Mothra vs. Bagan storyline, Bagan is shown to be able to blow a hole in one of Mothra's wings with an energy beam from his mouth, so he does have destructive beam ability. He's also shown firing lightning bolts from his main nasal horn and growing what seems to be some type of energy wings out of his back. So this is a monster which is very well-rounded in terms of his abilities. Now in Super Godzilla, the version that appeared seemed to possess a high physical strength and durability. He could slash with his powerful slasher claw attack, perform a diamond storm in which he would shoot white star-like objects from his horns, and he would also fire a white plasma beam from his mouth and generate a force field to block incoming attacks. Bagan's attacks were the strongest, in fact, used by any enemy in the game, which 
if we're talking about it being a canon appearance, would put him as one of, if not the strongest kaiju we've ever seen. Additionally, he also had the most health out of any enemy in the game, and normal Godzilla's attacks would only cause a very, very small amount of damage, making it necessary, of course, to transform into Super Godzilla, the namesake of the game. And that would then, of course, enable Godzilla to actually defeat the greatest kaiju that Godzilla has ever faced against. So, have you heard of Bagan? Now, of course, like I said, he was never made, although if we're counting Super Godzilla as something of canon, he is the strongest kaiju we have ever seen, ever face off against Godzilla. And interestingly enough, Bagan is one of only two known monsters to be more physically massive and greater in weight than the final form of Biolante, who in fact weighs in at a lesser 220,000 tons. As I said, we never actually got to see Bagan, but it's an interesting kaiju to bring to your attention and as I am kind of covering the unmade ones at the moment to bring you a more relaxed informal approach to these Godzilla Sunday videos I thought I would bring you Bagan, the strongest kaiju, the most menacing beast we have yet to ever see face off against Godzilla. So let me know all your thoughts on Bagan down below in the comment section. Have you even heard of him? A lot of people haven't but again I thought I would bring this one to you guys. So please do let me know all your thoughts down below in the comment section. Give it a big thumbs up and a share as that really helps the channel out. You have no idea how sharing a video really does get the content out there. As always, I've been Mr. H. Until next time, I will catch you in the comment section.